Hello and welcome to another video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. This video is part of a series of MuleSoft related video tutorials where I'm covering different topics related to MuleSoft integration platform. This video, uh, we are going to cover what exactly are message processors in MuleSoft and what are different types of message processors that we come across when implementing integration flows using AnyPoint Studio. Before we talk about the types of uh, message processors that are available or that are supported in MuleSoft AnyPoint platform, it's important to first uh, shed a light on what exactly are message processors, why they are used for, and what is the significance of these message processors. So basically, whenever you are implementing any type of integration between different type of heterogeneous set of applications using MuleSoft, you are essentially receiving data in the form of messages from some of the source applications or source system and that data is being uh, transmitted after doing certain level of uh, business logic or uh, uh, different type of transformation logic at your uh, integration flow and then it is being sent to the downstream systems. So anything that you receive is in the form of messages and messages contain payload and properties. So once this message uh, is received in your message flows in integration platform, then data that you receive in these messages needs to be processed. So when we say data needs to be processed, data needs to uh, be processed in different ways depending on the business requirement, different, depending on what kind of data you are uh, receiving and what kind of data is required for the downstream system. It needs some sort of transformation, maybe it needs some sort of aggregation or splitting, maybe some sort of filtration needs to be done before you process the data and make it available to the downstream system and certain level of uh, routing related logic also needs to be implemented uh, because you can have uh, n number of different heterogeneous set of systems and applications that are interested in uh, some specific type of data. So all these types of uh, implementation and these type of transformations and these type of uh, processing needs to be done. And whenever we say this, all this type of transformation or processing needs to be done, and in MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio, we get different type of message processors that perform all this. So that's what the message processor is and that's what the beauty of message processors is that you don't need to write the whole uh, set of uh, implementation code in some specific core programming language. Rather, you are going to receive some ready to be uh, ready to use off the shelf uh, message processors that are going to uh, serve the purpose and do the job on your behalf. So if we talk about the types of message processors uh, which are available uh, in MuleSoft, there are uh, certain type of message processors uh, which I have mentioned here in, in different categories, but it's important to mention here that uh, many of them overlap. For example, I will be talking about connectors and I'll explain what exactly connectors are. But when I talk about components, so basically connectors are also uh, containing certain components. So a group of components uh, makes one connector. So uh, it's not that uh, they are uh, completely separate. So there is certain level of correlation between these different types that I've mentioned here. So we will talk about connectors which connect different types of applications. We, we will talk about components which are basic building block of our applications that, that we implement in MuleSoft. Then we will talk about routers and explain what exactly routers are and why they are used for. And then I'll be explaining what are the filters and what is the significance of using filters and then we will talk about scopes and last but not least about transformers. So at a high level, these are some of the types of uh, message processors that are commonly used. And I will be explaining all of these one by one. So if we talk about connectors, connectors are uh, available in AnyPoint platform and AnyPoint connectors are reusable extensions to the Mule runtime and they enable integration with the third party systems. Whenever we are implementing integration solutions, we often need to integrate with different type of uh, off-the-shelf products. For example, maybe <clears throat> we need to connect with Oracle database, we need to connect with MongoDB, we need to connect with the SAP system, we need to connect with some ER other ERP system, maybe we need to connect with some billing system. So there can be uh, tons of different systems uh, which needs to be integrated so it's not logical that we uh, do the coding one by one for all of those with our own standards and with our own limited understanding. So the beauty of uh, this type of integration platform like MuleSoft is that they provide you ready to use uh, uh, connectors which are tailored to the needs of those particular applications or systems. For example, if you want to connect to Siebel system, 
you will get a ready to use connector for Siebel from any point exchange and then you can use that and this connector will contain all of the required message processor or components that you need in order to do perform different type of operations when integrating with that particular type of system and then uh, the, the is the good thing about these uh, connectors is that they help you to achieve seamless and standardized integration so you don't you you will not have a spaghetti of code and you will not have a, a, a variety of different uh, coding standards being followed for example uh, if you uh, look into the coding standards that are being followed by one team that might vary from another team but here in this case uh, the beauty is that uh, uh, let's suppose you want to connect to sap then the connector that is available to you uh, through any point exchange that will contain all the operations which have been implemented keeping in mind all of the uh, all of the features that are available from sap or from that system to which to for which this connector has been created and it will it will have all the standards aligned with that application so you will not have uh, uh, certain surprises and then um, you will not have to uh, worry about the internal in nitty gritties of these uh, all the components which are part of these connectors so when we talk about connector they act uh, both inbound and outbound so operations that are provided by these connectors they are uh, uh, of both natures they are uh, there are certain operations which are receiver and which are receiving the messages from the source system and then there can be some outbound uh, message processors or outbound components or operations within those uh, uh, connectors which provide you functionality to uh, send the responses or send data to the outside uh, for that particular system and when we say connectors are uh, as i stated uh, as i stated uh, uh, connectors are essentially a group of components so in within a connector you will find uh, dozens of different uh, operations which are being uh, used and which are made available uh, through those connectors and essentially they are uh, components in in themselves so you will have multiple components and together they form a connector and then if we talk about some of the examples uh, salesforce connector uh, you have http connector and uh, you can have uh, some other connectors uh, which you can use so the, the examples i have given here are just two examples but it's not that uh, salesforce and http are the only example you have vm connector uh, you have uh, connectors for siebel crm and you have connector for sugar crm you will have a lot of other connectors and uh, if you go to any point exchange you will see that uh, a lot of other connectors uh, for some of the important applications are made available and continuously being added so depending on your requirement of your integration platform and integration strategies or the systems that you want to integrate the very first thing that you need to always check is that is there a connector already available for that or not and uh, i'm pretty much sure that for all the major applications or systems to which you want to integrate mulesoft would have already created a connector but of course uh, there are ways that you can still uh, create your own custom connectors as well then we will talk about components so components are primary building blocks of mule application so whenever you are creating mule applications you are creating message flows and within message flows you are using different components and for those components you have different operations that that are being used so these components execute business logic on the message which are flowing through so messages are flowing through the uh, integration layer and there you are using message flows and within message flows you are uh, using components and those components contain the business logic uh, which you use uh, depending on your requirements to perform different type of operations on the individual messages on their payload level or on their uh, header levels there are different types of components which are available for example you have general purpose components uh, one of the example is the logger component which you use for the logging purposes similarly you can have script components uh, where you can have some scripts uh, running in and the business logic is within those scripts for example you have java components and then you can have java classes and the logic for those components will be within uh, those classes and the methods within those classes and then you have web services components and these web services components are used to uh, to integrate with the web services like soap web services or rest restful web services then we will be talking about routers routers are a type of component and if we talk about routers they basically control the message flows within the applications so within the application uh, when you are implementing your message flows uh, the message flows can be very simple but they can be at a complex level from moderate to extreme complex level and you can have a lot of logic implemented to decide the routing 
that whenever a particular message arrives there can be situation where you want to decide that this message should be routed to which particular system or which particular subflow or there can be uh, another uh, scenario where you want to have uh, some internal logic for which you need some sort of routing so this sort of routing uh, then sequencing aggregation and splitting all these things uh, are being handled by the router components and if we talk about mules of any point studio there you are provided with uh, the multiple types of um, message routers that you can use one of the popular router is the choice router that you can use to decide based on, on some certain conditions uh, about the flow of the messages for example you can have some uh, it's similar to uh, the choice uh, in case if else condition or multiple if else conditions where you decide that if certain condition is fulfilled then the message should be routed to a specific direction uh, where you have additional message processor or you can have a uh, you can have a message uh, you can have a subflow over there so it depends on your implementation how you are routing it then you you have api kit router and soap router and these two types of routers are used for the restful and soap web services so for the soap web services uh, you uh, you are routing based on the uh, type of endpoints and method that are that is being used in similar case uh, for the so for the restful web services based on the resource and method you are doing the routing and then you have scatter gather router which is used to uh, do the scatter and gather uh, which is uh, uh, just splitting and then combining uh, all of those uh, message flow messages and then uh, processing them parallelly i have already created some of the videos about choice routers and scatter gather and there are some videos about uh, soap router as well so you can go through those videos uh, in this channel and that will help you to understand these concepts more in more detail the next uh, type of uh, message processors are filters and filters are used for conditional filtration of messages that are flowing through so uh, whenever you have some messages that are coming into your uh, message flow in your mule software any point application then you often need to do some sort of filtration uh, before you process and you make it available for the subsequent uh, message processors so you can have filtration based on different type of uh, criteria maybe you are filtering based on the payload maybe you are filtering based on certain properties and then you can have uh, different type of logical filter boolean filters you can have filters based on the regular expression and you can have uh, uh, filters using the expression language so filtration is is often needed and even if you are not using this specific type of filter we have a validation module as well which contains different type of operation that can also serve the similar type of purposes and then the good thing is that you can define some global filters as well for generic criteria and that will apply to the to to wherever you want to refer to that global uh, filter and then uh, the good thing uh, on top of this is that you can even create your own custom filters if you think that some of uh, any of the existing available filter criteria or available filter options are not fulfilling your requirements i'll try to create some videos about the filters uh, in with the demonstration how you can use these type of filters in subsequent videos then we will talk about scopes and if we talk about scopes scopes are basically uh, known as wrappers and they act as processing blocks within a flow so a flow is a processing block the within a flow you can have certain sub processing blocks so those sub processing blocks are known as scopes and when you create a scope that scope can contain multiple processors inside so certain type of scopes can have only one processor but there are other type of uh, scopes which can have more than one message processors inside so if we if we talk about the example async scope is one of the example which uh, which is used for asynchronous processing uh, with the have which can have multiple uh, message processors within this scope and then we have a another very well known scope that that we often use is for each scope which you use to do uh, uh, iteration and then perform different type of operation on the individual records from within that uh, array then we have another popular scope which is subflow scope and this subflow scope is used to uh, route the messages to uh, to a subflow and then within the subflow you can have multiple type of message processors that can perform whatever logic you want to have these are just a few examples uh, and, and these are not the only examples you can have different other type of scopes as well that you can use as and when required all right so last but not least we will talk about transformers so transformers are used to uh, do the transformation of the message payloads or headers and when we say transformation it can be uh, message enrichment it can be message alteration 
So depending on your requirements, sometimes you need to do some enrichment of your message to enrich it with some additional information. Or maybe you need to do some type of alteration. As an example, maybe you want to do a simple type of transformation from XML to JSON or vice versa. <clears throat> Similarly, you can have uh, some other type of uh, transformation uh, like you want to uh, add uh, something into the payloads, you can add something into the properties or headers. Then you have you can also have some type of scripted transformers where you, all of the logic of the transformation is maybe in some type of uh, scripted language like in JavaScript, like in uh, some other uh, scripting uh, format, and that script is containing all the logic for the transformation. Then you can have another type of transformer which is Java Object Transformer, which is used to perform different type of transformations from Java Object to another format or from another format to Java. For example, it can be from the byte array to the Java object or vice versa. It can be from, from, a, from a JSON to a Java object or vice versa. So there are a lot of uh, options available for the transformation uh, in other, uh, under this category of Java object transformer. And then you can have your custom transformer as well. If none of the available transformer fits into your requirement, you can always write your custom transformer and using your custom transformer, you can perform different type of transformations. So that's it from this video in which I try to keep it as simple as possible, not going into the nitty gritties, not going into the details at a high level. These are the important type of message processors. And uh, this uh, video is important uh, to understand the concept as well as uh, from the interview perspective also these concepts are important uh, because uh, this type of questions are often asked. So if you have any further uh, queries, you can always write in the comment section. And you can visit tutorialspedia.com where I have uh, plenty of tutorials uh, related to uh, tutorials uh, on MuleSoft as well as other integration technologies. And then you can always subscribe to this channel, Tutorialspedia YouTube channel as more videos like this are available on this channel and in the future uh, other videos on the basic as well as advanced topics are also going to be published that's it from this video thank you very much